so I literally just walked through the door after a four hour delay from my flight. Um, so thank you for waiting. Um, so I'm here to talk today about um, a randomised control trial that we conducted at the Central West Cancer Care Centre in Orange. Um, so as you're probably aware is that the prostate, can, um, prostate isn't a fixed gland and it moves around in the pelvis and particularly when we're delivering daily radiation treatment um, we need the bowel to be empty each day which allows optimal positioning of the prostate gland. If the bowel is too full of gas or matter that affects the positioning of the prostate which may um, I guess result in a lower than desired dose of the radiation to the prostate and then too much radiation to our healthy tissue particularly being um, our, our rectal tissue. So in the literature, um, there's a lack of prospective adequately powered trials to identify if any one intervention can result in a consistently empty rectum. And in the published literature, they compare laxatives to no intervention at all. And there currently haven't been any published studies which compare two different types of laxatives. And there are a variety of laxatives that are used throughout Australia. And I guess predominantly your um, bulking laxatives like Metamucil or Fibergel. Um, and the osmotic laxatives like Movicol. And at the Centre West Cancer Care Centre in Orange, our current protocol is to use Movicol plus a low gas diet. So within the study as well, we decided to look at the use of probiotics in this setting. Um, so probiotics is a very novel area of research um, at the present time. And a lot of work has been done in the field with irritable bowel and also inflammatory bowel disease. <clears throat> and studies have shown that use of probiotics can help to reduce gas in this population. What we also know from the research is that the homeostasis of our gut microbes can be altered during radiation therapy um, to the gastrointestinal tract, um, and use of probiotics might help to reduce that inflammation caused by the radiation. There's been one study conducted by Key and colleagues um, which use probiotics in this setting in an attempt to reduce rectal gas levels for radiation therapy treatment to the prostate. Um, and results showed a trend towards gas reduction, um, but their study numbers were quite small. So our study design was a single-blinded randomised control trial comparing two different types of laxatives. So osmotic laxative, Movicol, being our standard care arm, um, and our, our other arm was a bulking laxative with the Metamucil um, plus the probiotic agent. And both, group both groups followed our standard low gas diet, um, which removed cruciferous vegetables, uh, carbonated beverages like beer and soft drinks, uh, gastric irritants like caffeine, um, and a large amounts of um, alcohol and spicy foods. So our study aims were to determine if a bulking laxative combined with a probiotic is more effective than the osmotic laxative at reducing rectal gas during radiation treatment. So our objectives were to determine if there was a difference in rectal gas between the two treatment arms, to see if there was any difference in the treatment related toxicities between the two treatment arms, also to assess compliance to the low gas diet, the laxatives and the probiotic regimen and ethics was approved by our local ethics committee. So our inclusion criteria were adult males um, undergoing external beam radiation therapy to the intact prostate um, where fiducial markers had been inserted for position verification. Our exclusion criteria included severe constipation, abdominal disease like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, history of extensive abdominal surgery, um, and patients who are on digoxin or salicylates as their absorption is impaired with um, Metamucil, um, and individuals whose primary language was other than English. And our study was conducted between June to December last year. So rectal gas was measured in this study on a scale of one to five, so ordinal scale, where one represented no gas present in the bowel and five being 100% of the bowel being occupied by gas. Um, and this method has been reported in the literature by McNair and colleagues previously. We also got participants to record a three-day food diary at four different time points during their treatment. From this, we analysed the fibre and fluid intakes uh, we got them to self-report their stool frequency and consistency using the Bristol um, seven-point scale. And we also got them to self-record their laxative probiotic use during this time as well. So patients were analysed according to the intention to treat principle. 
Um, we couldn't use a priori effect size calculation because of the absence of previous published studies, um, as other studies had compared a laxative to no intervention at all. Uh, so uh, um, power calculation was um, determined for the study with an aim to recruit 10 patients per um, treatment arm um, for a small to medium effect size. So 29 patients were screened and approached to participate in the study and 17 consented. <clears throat> Nine patients were recruited into the osmotic laxative arm and eight into the bulking laxative probiotic arm. So during the treatment time frame, um, we collected 433 um, computed tomography CT scans, um, which we used to analyse the rectal gas levels. 180 scans were analysed from the osmotic laxative arm and 253 from the bulking laxative arm. Um, and we looked at the difference in the number of scans per group um, and it trended towards significance because what we were finding is that our bulky la bulking laxative group were tending to fail their CBCT scans more often than our osmotic laxative group. So the mean age of our participants was 74 years. Um, I guess of note for our centre in particular, because we're a rural treatment centre, 35% of our patients travelled for treatment daily and 41% lived away from home while receiving their treatment. With compliance to their laxative use, 86% um, in the bulking laxative and 88% in the osmotic laxative arm um, reported regular consumption of their laxative. With the probiotic, we had a 68% um, recording rate, um, but unfortunately, three of the um, handed in food diaries went missing over the Christmas period, so we did lose a little bit of data from three patients. When we came to looking at um, compliance to our low gas diet, of the diaries that were collected, only three participants reported consuming gas forming foods, um, and those in particular were our eggs, uh, coffee intake greater than four cups a day. Um, a curry and then cruciferous vegetables. Fibre intakes were higher in our bulking laxative group um, and that is because the Metamucil provides an additional nine grams of fibre per day. Um, so it was 27 grams for the bulking laxative group compared to 19.8 grams in our osmotic laxative group. When looking at the um, stool consistency um, with our participants, Participants in the osmotic laxative group reported a change in their stool pretty much from the commencement of taking the Movicol. Um, so pre-study stool type was a type 4 from the Bristol stool chart um, and went to a type 5 on commencement of the Movicol. Within our Metamucil group, their stool type remained a type 4 um, throughout the duration of their treatment. We didn't have from the food diaries many patients report any treatment related toxicities with only one patient from each treatment arm reporting diarrhoea in week seven of their treatment. So when we looked at the um, CBCT scans, um, what we found is that participants in the bulking laxative group had a statistically significant higher proportion of scans which received a rectal gas rating of three or above. So there's 43% from our um, Metamucil group compared to 22 in our Movicol group. Um, and as you can see from the scan, um, there's 46% of our Movicol group who had a rectal gas rating of one. So when we explored this further, um, what we found is that the odds of a higher rectal gas rating were increased by 3.2 times for the bulking laxative and probiotic arm. Um, and when we looked to see if that higher fibre intakes were a contributing factor to this, when we put fibre into the statistical model, um, we found that fibre was not a contributing factor to the higher rectal gas levels. We also looked at how um, often our patients were failing their CBT scans from either having too much matter or too much gas in the bowel. Um, and our median proportion of scans rated as gas fails were higher in our bulking laxative group um, compared to our osmotic laxative group, but that result wasn't significant. And there was no difference between um, the groups and the number of rectum fails. Um, but as you can probably see on the um, graph down the bottom, there are three patients in particular from our Metamucil group who had quite high number of gas fails throughout their treatment. 
Um, so as we're aware, this is one of the first studies to compare the common laxatives used in the Australian setting um, with patients who are undergoing prostate, um, radiation therapy for prostate, prostate cancer. Um, and what we found that the osmotic laxative is more effective than the bulking laxative and probiotic at achieving um, lower rectal gas levels for treatment. Uh, and that higher fibre intakes weren't a contributing factor to increased gas levels. So the effect of the osmotic laxative drawing water into the bowel made stools looser, um, resulting in an early and consistent bowel evacuation before treatment. Compared to the use of the bulking laxative, which stimulated peristalsis through increasing stool bulk, um, was not as effective at consistently emptying bowels before treatment. So in terms of further research, um, I guess one of the flaws from this study is that unfortunately we weren't able to use a more objective measure to measure rectal gas volume. Um, and also we didn't quite meet our target in terms of our um, participant numbers. Also uh, looking to explore the role of probiotics further in this setting. Um, ideally we would have liked to have used them with the Movicol group as well, but um, that was just funding issues um, pertaining to that. Because a lot of our patients also travel, um, looking at the, the um, impact of stress um, on travel, of not being able to work while they're having their treatment from being away from their family, changes in daily diet and routine, which may impact on their bowel habits. Also looking at the use of long-term um, effects of Movicol on gut microbiota and the, pro um, the role that probiotics may play in this setting. And then because everyone's own gut flora is unique and individual um, and we need to explore further um, individual influences that um, affect rectal fullness and rectal gas levels. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. So I guess just a thank you to the HEDI um, and the Rural Research Capacity Building Program um, as this project was conducted as part of that program um, and Georgina Luskin from the University of Sydney um, for mentoring and assistance with data collection and analysis. Thank you.